Hey, what's good, y'all? Fusion here, back with another reaction video. Um, haven't really talked about the Suns yet. King, uh, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal. It does look like Bradley Beal is playing the point guard uh, to a certain extent on this team. Um, I think that this big three, quote unquote, will be very, very interesting. I'm wondering how they will be able to share uh, the ball. Uh, they're both offensive minded. I mean, both, all three of them, excuse me, are offensive minded players. Uh, they have the ability to score uh, clutch players as well. Um, they can all hit the mid range shot as well as the three point shot to a good efficiency. And I think they, you know, uh, play basketball well. I mean, like, that's, I mean, like, they just hoopers. All three of them. I think that the only thing that may be an issue is on the defensive side. I think we're going to have to see Devin Booker and Bradley Beal step up. Uh, Kevin Durant has has improved uh, defensively after playing with, at the Warriors for a bit, but I do think that this is going to be a um, this is going to be an important season for Kevin Durant. Um, of course, like the other two as well, but I think that Kevin Durant has a lot to prove. I do feel like he's been getting a lot of um, backlash and hate already for the whole Warriors uh, situation, and then he went to Brooklyn, and people are saying he really didn't play well in Brooklyn, so... I think there's a lot of doubt at the moment on where people stand with Kevin Durant. Um, that being said, which one out of these three will be taking a back seat? If you've ever seen any of the um, big threes or or um, that, honestly, Le LeBron, D-Wade, and Chris Bosh. Chris Bross took the back seat. James Harden, Kyrie, and KD. It never worked because I don't think anyone was willing to take the back seat. Um, Clay, Steph, and KD. Steph took the back seat. Clay Thompson was there. He was always the catch and shoot guy, but Steph took the back seat there, in my opinion. I think that there will always be someone to take the back seat. Who will take the back seat here? It cannot be Kevin Durant. I believe he is too much of an offensive threat to be considered for that backseat because he is 6'8", 6'9", with handles, can shoot, um, solid like defender as well. He's a he's just an offensive guy. Bradley Bill as well. He's a little bit on the shorter side, but he still has an offensive game that is great. Same thing with Devin Booker. So I'm really wondering how this is going to work. Um, I do think that they need a, of course, I think that this is an important piece to a lot of teams, but a pass first guy, be it a pass first point guard or a power forward that is willing to be that pass first guy, or even a like small forward, sort of like how uh, Ben Simmons plays. Of course, he plays at the point guard, I believe, but... I think he would work well, well with this team because he's a very unselfish player and it will allow him to um, do what he does best, which is get his team involved and get out the way. And he doesn't need to be that scorer because I don't think he has that skill. Uh, but yeah, so those are my thoughts right quick just before we do get started. But without further ado, the new big three. Um, yeah. <laughs> if people look at him as a three-point shooter. KD up ahead, book. Suns in transition. He had Eubanks, but he fires in a three instead. I like the passing that the Suns have, and, and certainly very unselfish, but you also take an open shot when you have it. Eubanks finds book. Downloads the three. Yeah, he does not hesitate to go to the basket. And rising up again. Deposits a three. Big shot, book. Seven points, three rebounds for Reed. All right, bro, this dude, Devin Booker, is nuts. Uh, <laughs> I think what is going to change a lot is I don't think that Devin Booker has, has had a 
great score behind him or besides him uh beside him excuse me he's always had chris paul who is a great passer and deandre ayton who is very very sometimey and that's it he now has he's he now has two offensive threats added to him added with him already being that offensive threat so this allows him to be open. This allows him to take more shots because I do think that people will be, it, it will be, it will be less of a double teaming thing for him. People will be less likely to gun for him when you have to deal with two other great players as well. So you could definitely see his, his percentage, I think, especially go up just a tad bit because obviously it's um, harder to shoot on the double team than one-on-one -on -one, as well as him being a great one-on-one -on -one player as well and just to space the floor um you let him get somebody on the island not many people can defend him like that on the island one-on-one -on -one, and they will be less uh, likely to help because how are you going to help off of kd how are you going to help off of bradley bill and i think bradley bill is going to be a huge key here um he is a great catch and shoot guy and i do believe he's going to get a lot of a lot of catch and shoot threes and he won't have to do as much off off of like the dribble because again there are two other offensive threats on the team <laughs> yeah but jim booker's going crazy Booker putting on an early exhibition here in the first quarter rebounded by murray the big, the big thing for the Suns too here is big steal is not to just kick caught one on one. A mm. bogey order to the Trailblazers, but good pass. Book with the steal. That's his second, and then just finishes great pass, quick pass by KD to a Kogi, and the nice cut by Book. KD on the move, floating to his right, his tissue soft. Three forty to go here in the first quarter. Book working on his 17 points. Gives it up to Kevin Durant. Rises up and connects. Murray has struggled with his shot here in the first quarter. Rupert, his pass intercepted by Book. Turnover number eight. Met two to the 10th floor. And I think for the Suns, too, the expectations in the locker room and obviously from the fan base are going after a title this season is Kevin. Um. I don't really pause it much there, but there's a lot of stuff to be um, seen there. Again, like I stated way before the game started here, or the highlight started, defense. Um, Devin Booker is going to have to lock in on defense because I do think there's going to be a lot more shots going up. So he's going to have to adjust to play some sort of defense. I don't think he was ever a terrible defender, but... It, it was never something that people really talked about. As you see here, um, I do think he has has the ability uh, to play solid defense. I think anyone who is athletic has the ability uh, to play solid defense. So you just got to lock in on that end. But now he doesn't have to go 100% offense and 75% defense. <laughs> He can go 90, 80. He can go, you know, 85, 85%. You know, it's something that he can do at a really efficient level now that he doesn't have to exert all of his energy and his uh, breath on the offensive side. So I think he's just going to overall improve on the defensive end. Durant pulls the plug on a three. Portland had last bucket for the Blazers and. That's what Vogel has told his stars, his superstars, just rise up. Shikogi has kind of a switchability to be able to cover one through four. Bradley Beal. Good attack. Really good scoring. attack. Bradley Beal, everybody knows what a great outside shot he has, but he attacks relentlessly. Yeah, okay. deep. Off the screen. Here's Beal again into the lane, attacking the rack. Off the feed from Kevin Durant. So he's had those 11 steals mm. in the last game. Oh, man. Pull back the move by Beal and sets up Metu. That was Metu. More to come. 
Um, I do think that Bradley Bill is going to be a interesting addition because this will be his first time in a while being a part of a um, playoff slash finals a contention team. I think that we're going to see either an improvement from Bradley Bill to show that he is actually one of them ones because I do feel like since he was playing on the Wizards and since John Wall was injured for a while and then left and then not a lot of eyes were on the Wizards at that time. That being said, Bradley Bill has always been a great player. I'm wondering how he will work in the playoffs with great players like surrounding him. And I'm wondering if he will elevate or he will be that guy who takes the back seat and will hit threes and all that type of stuff. But I'm glad to see he is, a, um, he's like cutting and attacking and getting to the basket, feeding the ball to other people down there. I believe that Bradley Bill is going to be the X factor of this team. Like you already know Kevin Durant is going to do his stuff. Uh, you already know Devin Booker is going to do his stuff. But the big question is, what is Bradley Bill going to do? And will his play be able to transfer from Wizards option one to Suns option two or three, uh, depending on the night? Magical. And then what a the pass, pass And good Matthew finish, too. He ain't dunk it, but... challenge is going to be for Frank Vogel. How does he, you know, spread out those minutes with everybody? Fade away by Kevin Durant. And then comes down. KD just taking it to the Soft. left. Out of there on Too the good, man. Goodwin. He went to the ground and punched it out. Uh, and it creates the bucket and one for Kevin Durant. So good at the left side. And gets a little push down below by Knox. Durant flopped, but they're going to be very conscious of that. Grayson Allen pumps up a three. KD, offensive rebound. Um, yes, yeah, so just real quick. You're seeing a lot of one-on-ones, uh, ISO gameplay from Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Bill here. Mostly Kevin Durant going one on one. And I think that's going to be a lot of what you will see. A lot of matchup issues. I don't think that there's a lot of teams that can hold three great one on one players who can shoot from damn near anywhere off anywhere on the floor. And I don't think that there's many teams, if any, that have three solid like defenders who can match up height wise with Kevin Durant, speed wise with Kevin Durant, um, speed wise with uh, Bradley Bill as well. Um, and just overall offensive prowess from Devin Booker. I just don't think there's a lot of teams, if any, that can actually do that well. Um, let me even think who can match up size-wise, really. I think it's really only Giannis, uh, Anthony Davis, and I'm missing two others, maybe. Drake, Jay Crowder, maybe. Uh, PJ Tucker, maybe holding Kevin Durant. But who will guard the other two? I think this is just a evolved form of that Warriors team back in the day uh, with Kevin Durant, um, Steph, and Clay. I'm wondering how good this trio will be compared to his past trio, uh, his being Kevin Durant's past trio. But I do think it's going to be interesting. I really do think it's going to be interesting. Put back and one. Line six is six from the free throw line, and he gets there again. Great rebound and a big offensive rebound by the Suns as far as who's going to be in, at the end of the game. And I think a lot of those for Frank Vogel is going to be who's playing well and who the man. And uh, just real quick, after this, I am going to end. Um, after this, I am going to end the video anyway. But uh, Grayson Allen, um, I do think he's sort of a. I don't think he's a douchebag. Yeah, for sure. He does give douche energy, but he's effective. He's an effective irritant who can shoot. I think every team, 
like I always state, needs an irritant on their team because your star can't be the one to, um, what's the best way to put this? Because I don't want it to sound like there is a someone who is a quote unquote headhunter out there. Someone who is out there to, um, you know, get garbage balls or get the tech because someone pushed your teammate or whatever. I think that Grayson Allen can be that. I do think he's sort of pussy, but I feel like he's one of those, you know what? I'm just go ahead and say it. He's one of those dirty players that every single team needs on their team. Patrick Beverly, I don't think he's a dirty player all the way per se, but he is an irritant. Draymond Green, borderline dirty player irritant but does his job well uh, let's even go back even further dennis rodman bill lambeer irritants get in the way of course it was different basketball back then so hacking and um quote-unquote head hunting was sort of normal normalized back then but i do think it's still in the NBA now, but the star won't do it because why would the star be someone who would do that type of thing? So you need someone like that. You need a guy who is going to ruffle the other team's um, feathers. And if Grayson Allen can accept that role as well as being an option for a solid, sh- sh- solid, sh- um, solid shooting guy, because I think he had twelve. That night, that, that 12 points plus irritating somebody on that team to like to shake them off of their game, plus his his ability to play defense, be it fouling and not really getting a lot of the f- f- fouls called, be it, again, mind games of the douchebaggery that he does do. Um, I do think it's important for every team to have someone like that. And if he can step into that role, just like I stated, I think this team will be pretty interesting. I don't know about the, their bench. I do think that they need to clean up like their bench to a certain extent or push um, push to either have Bradley, Bill, Devin Booker, or KD on the floor at all times. Um, then I think it could work. But I do think that their bench needs a little bit of tweaking here and there. But overall, not a bad showing. Um... Again, you saw a lot of great one-on-one play. Uh, You saw not a lot of helping from the defensive side uh, from Portland. It's going to be hard for them to help. It's going to be hard for any team uh, to help against a team like this. Um, Those are my thoughts in the reaction. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. What do you guys think about this Suns team? Do you think this team is a... Shooting, uh, shooting for the finals. Is this team a top three team in the West? Do you think this team has enough to beat beat both of the Nuggets and um, I don't even know who the. I think these. I do think that the Suns is the the Suns are the second best team in the West now. So I'm wondering how the how the how this will work but do you think they can beat of uh, the nuggets in milwaukee because i do think that that milwaukee is the team to beat as well uh but yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next video peace